Welcome back to God's Hand in Our Lives in our CLC Sunday School series. We have been working our way through the New Testament and the book of Acts over the last couple of weeks, and today we'll be taking a look at Peter and John as they heal a lame man in the early New Testament. This is going to be taken from Acts chapters 3 and 4. So we're going to be taking a couple of chapters, kind of sticking them together and talking about a couple of different accounts from the life and the ministry of Peter and John. Yeah. So if you think about a, a lame man, um, we use the word paralyzed more today. So this is a man that didn't have use of his legs. Um, and back then, they, they didn't have the accommodations that we have today. So we'll get to see the struggle that a man who isn't able to walk has to face each and every day. He can't work. Um, there's no there's no programs to help him pay for anything. There's no wheelchair to help him move around on his own. He he gets moved by people to this gate, and he sits there and he begs for food, uh, for money. Um, so that would be kind of a tough thing to go through. So I want you to take a second and think about someone who might be paralyzed. Maybe there's someone that you know. Um, and now ask yourself: Is there anything that you can do to help those people. You know, there there are certain things that that we can do. Um, we can we can help them um, to move to certain areas. We can maybe get something for them that they need, but we can't really do anything to fix their problem, right? Because um, we we can't make them walk again. So, but we're going to see in this lesson that yeah. there is somebody who can. Yeah. And we're going to see how, how that works out for him. Yeah, we'll see how Peter was able to do that, um, what, how he received uh, that power to do that, how he did that. So why don't we go ahead then and begin with prayer? If you guys will fold your hands and bow your heads with us. Dear Heavenly Father, Please send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word that we are about to study. Help us to learn about preaching your name to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this is a pretty important chapter in the early New Testament. We're early on in the book of Acts. And if you back up to the previous chapter, we have the event called Pentecost. And that's where God poured out his Holy Spirit upon his disciples and they were, they were able to speak in all of these different languages and tell people about Jesus. So the church is really spreading, and mm-hmm. we've seen examples of that taking place. But you have to remember that the people that put Jesus to death, they don't like the fact that Peter and John and all of the other apostles are telling these stories about Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so when Peter and John caused this miracle to take place through the, the work of Jesus... We're going to see that there are going to be people that are going to not be very happy about that. So a couple of things for us to kind of keep an eye out on as we're going through this lesson. Our main theme in this lesson is that Peter and John, while they knew that there were people that didn't want them talking about Jesus, it didn't stop them from telling other people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. They... They're going to say that there's nothing else that we can do. We, we need to do this because we know that Jesus is the one who saves us from our sins. And then the inner aim for us today then is going to be to realize that there's a lot of people in our world today that they don't want us talking about Jesus either. Yeah. But if we really know that Jesus died and rose again and that he has forgiven our sins and that he is the only way that we're going to get into heaven, then like Peter and John, we have to confess, I can't help but tell other people about Jesus when I have the opportunity. Yeah. So that's going to be kind of our main theme for this lesson today. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a good way for us to work on our mindsets on, on our Christian faith because you can easily look at it and be scared and say, nope, not going to do it, not worth it. Or you can have the same mindset that we learned from Peter and John and, and free yourself from that fear that Satan likes to pour onto you and and just really share Jesus' love with other people. Right. So why don't we go ahead and begin. Um, we're starting off with Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, 
whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on, them, on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Let's stop there for just a minute, Michael. Yeah. So a couple of things that you guys might not be familiar with. There's a couple of words in there mm -hmm. that you maybe have never heard before. Do you know what an alm is? What is an alm, Michael? An alm, if I'm right, would be just some type of money. Asking for money or different things that could help them out, such as food or maybe even clothing, just anything that they can give to that man as they're walking by. Right. So in in that, so you maybe have been driving down, down the road, maybe you're in a big city or something like that, and you see somebody who's got a sign, he's got a cardboard sign, and he says, I'm homeless, and, and he's got a little bucket or something, maybe he goes through the traffic and he's collecting a little bit of money. So that would be sort of similar to what this alm is. It was actually something that was done by the church, so it was, that's why he was there by the church. And, and the church would take care of these, these people, and it was, it was kind of a, like their offering. But, but they would give an offering to the church, and they would also give an offering to the poor. So he's asking for some financial assistance because he's not able to work because of his handicap. Right. And, and so an alm is just giving some sort of financial assistance to somebody who isn't able to do things like we can today. So you think about, for example, Michael said, we don't have, back then, they didn't have the same capabilities that we mm -hmm. have today. He couldn't ride, ride around on a wheelchair. They didn't have something like that. And, and so the church and other people in the community, they would help out in order to take care of this person to provide for him in addition to, to his family. Now, if he didn't have family, it would fall more upon the community to help take mm -hmm. care of him. So it wasn't a requirement, but he's asking for help. And in this case, he's going to get a different kind of help than what yeah. he was expecting. And yeah, we'll, we'll see his reaction to once he receives that. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. That's a pretty neat thing. Yeah, yeah. Ta talking about how difficult that would have been. And, you know, it says that, this is a man who is lame or paralyzed from birth. So he's had to deal with this right, his entire life. He has absolutely no idea what it's like for, for someone to be able to use their legs. You know, there's a couple of amazing things to me, Michael, in this mm -hmm. account. Because you're right. It, it tells us that he was like this from birth. Mm -hmm. when, when somebody who has... You think about little children. You know, little children... It takes them a while to learn how to walk. You know, you see, you think about a little baby, and they just start to get the strength in their legs, and it's going to take them, well, it depends. Everybody's different. But it might take them weeks in order to finally figure out the balance mm -hmm. and how to move the foot and all of that. And the same thing is true with an adult who's gone through, for example, a car accident. Yeah. And they've been unable to walk for a long period of time. And they have to go through physical therapy in order to little by little train their body how to do that. This man had never walked before. Yeah. But notice what he's doing. Walking, leaping, leaping, and praising God. So this is an amazing thing. This isn't a natural thing. Yeah. This is something that was supernatural, beyond nature. God not only gives him the strength to be able to do it, but teaches his body immediately mm -hmm. exactly what he needs to know in order to know not just how to walk, but how to leap and jump yeah. and all of that just simply because of the name of Jesus. Yeah, and, and most importantly, 
causing him to praise God as well. Right. I think there's a beautiful picture in this story. We talked about how this man has been lame since birth. Um, and when he was healed, he was healed immediately and perfectly, fully. And the only person that can do that is Christ Jesus. Yeah. And so this imagery we have, we can compare it to us. What are we from birth? Sin. Full. Yeah. We Lame. are full of sin. We are we are not righteous. We are we are handicapped and in the worst way possible. Right. And when we accept Jesus into our lives, when Jesus works faith into our hearts, then we have this boom, instant healing. Now it's not something that we can see, but with our with our eyes physically like this man, we could see him walking and leaping, but what Jesus has done in our hearts is a full 100% right. healing of our hearts and washing away of all of our sins and giving us righteousness. He doesn't ever do anything halfway. No. Nope. And so when Jesus decides to heal you, you're getting healed. Um, and perfectly as well. So it's just wonderful imagery we can compare to us as well. And then to see, as you pointed out, Michael, the man's response. Yeah. He's not... He's not like, well, thank you, see you later. But rather, he's, he is traveling along with Peter and John, and he's mm -hmm. praising God. He knows where this blessing has come from, yeah. which is going to be really important when we get into the next chapter, because there are going to be some people who are not going to know that. These people that are traveling by, and this is in the temple, it's at the hour of prayer, there's a lot of people that are coming into the temple. Mm -hmm. This is causing a huge scene. Yep. And we're talking about thousands of people gathering up after this great festival of Pentecost. And they know this guy. They've seen this guy at mm -hmm. the gate year after year after year after year after year. They probably know him by name. Mm -hmm. And they know he shouldn't be walking. <laughs> and so this is going to be an opportunity then for Peter and John to bring the gospel out, to point people to Jesus. Now, they could take the credit. Yeah. They could say, yeah, look what I did. But they're not going to do that. They're going to use that as an opportunity to point people to Jesus. Yeah. Talk about perfect timing, by the way. God always gives perfect timing. Right. Pentecost, amazing timing for Peter and John to be able to witness to a whole multitude of people. Right. Um, We're going to see the same thing here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, the, in the next section, we there, this is a long two chapters, chapters three and four. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this next section and we're going to kind of condense it. We're it's a paraphrase. You'll see that in your study. And a paraphrase just means that we're summarizing the events of their, we're taking it from scripture, but we're going we're to leave some things out in order to be able to get through everything in the next section. So you'll notice in your study at the top of the second column, it says paraphrase. Uh, we're just kind of briefly going to go over some of the main details that take place in the next section. So I'll pick it up there. As the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them greatly amazed. When Peter saw it, he responded to the people. Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why do you look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we made this man to walk? Jesus, whom you delivered up and killed and whom God raised from the dead, we are witnesses of him, his name, and through faith in his name, he has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him, that is through Jesus, has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Repent and be converted. Think of the writings of Moses, Samuel, and the other prophets, which tell of a prophet who is Jesus. Anyone who does not listen to these words that Jesus is the only way of salvation will go to hell at the end of the world. Now, that's a pretty that's, rough message. Yeah, that's that's strong for sure. Um, but it, it's needed. Um, so this is very shortly after Jesus was crucified. And there could have been people here that were the ones crying out, crucify him, crucify him. And... So what we need as sinful humans is we need both the law and the gospel. And and Paul's doing a, sorry, Peter is doing a good job of giving us both of them. 
We need that law to cut to our hearts. It shows us that we made a mistake. It showed them they made a mistake with wanting Jesus to be killed, not believing and trusting in him as God. Um, but it also brings out the gospel. Yeah. Not only does it bring out the law, and he says, you crucified him, but we're also reminded of what had to happen. Mm -hmm. Jesus was crucified, and it wasn't right, not from an earthly perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, he should not have been killed because he was innocent of the charges that had been brought against him, but he did it, and he did it in order to redeem us from our sin. He took our burden of sin upon himself mm -hmm. so that we would be right before God. And so Paul, Peter emphasizes there that not only was he crucified, but he was also raised from the dead. Yeah. And it was the power of this now resurrected Jesus who is still alive today who gave this man the ability to walk. It wasn't Peter, it wasn't John, it was Jesus. And you thought he was dead, but he's not. Mm -hmm. He rose again, and because he's still alive, he is the one who has given the ability for this man to walk. So that's a pretty amazing message of both law and gospel. Yeah, yeah, you know, you have on one perspective, knowing Peter Peter knew that not everyone was going to like what he was saying, and yet he's boldly proclaiming it. And another thing that we can take, um, take note from is how Peter doesn't take any glory for himself. Right. Um, this was all Jesus is doing, but he was simply doing it through Peter. Um, Acts... Acts is oftentimes called Acts of the Apostles, which is Peter, you know, um, uh, Paul, and so on and so forth. But it should really more accurately be titled the Acts of Jesus in his ascended glorious stage. All the miracles, all the, the witnessing, it all came through Jesus, but we don't see Jesus anymore in this picture. We see Jesus working through different individuals. Yeah, so that, that's kind of a neat thing in this and so many other lessons in Acts is that even though you don't see Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus is behind the scenes accomplishing these things as yeah. is his spirit, uh, causing people to come to faith and for them to know Jesus and to believe in him. Yeah, and also Jesus is still working today. Um, right. And even in a more um, simple state, He's given us all gifts and abilities. Now, I can't go up to pastor and heal him from whatever sickness he might have or if his arm is broken, but I do have other gifts, um, and so do you. And I think it's really easy for us to say, oh, I'm really good at playing music or playing sports or I'm really good at math, so I'm great. I, this is all me. I'm doing awesome. When in reality, we need to give that credit to God. We, we, didn't, we don't have these on our own. These are gifts that God's given us, and the glory should go to Him whenever we are praised. And there is such a tendency for us in our human flesh to want the glory, yeah. to want the praise. But again, that's one of the, the neat things with this lesson is to see how Peter probably wanted it too. Yeah. But he wasn't going to take it. He was going to point people to Jesus and what Jesus had done. Now, not everybody's going to be excited about this. Right. And that's what we're going to get into in the next chapter. As we get into chapter 4 now, we're going to hear that there's this big ruckus. There's a lot of people that are gathering. They all want to hear about this. They've heard the preaching of Peter. But there are some people who find out about it that are not happy with the message. So we're going to pick it up with chapter 4 at the very bottom of the second column. You want to pick it up there, Michael? Yeah. So we're back in Scripture now. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus in the resurrection from the dead, and they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day. For it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of men came to be about 5,000. Okay, let's stop there for just a minute. A couple of things that I think are probably important. Yeah. So earlier on in our lesson, we heard that it was the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times when we think of hours, we have to remember that our time is different than the Jews' time. We think the ninth hour, we think of nine o'clock in the morning. Right. But the Jewish time started at 6 o'clock in the morning. So the ninth hour, do some math, would be what time? 
If you start at 6 in the morning and you count ahead 9 hours, what time do you get to? Michael? About 3. 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So they're coming to the time of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And now we're told that it's evening. Mm -hmm. So evening for them would have started about 6 o'clock. So the, start, the sun starts to go down. That's darkness at that point. So we're talking about maybe two hours that they've been preaching mm -hmm. and, and discussing all of this. And as the day is starting to come to an end now, there are other people that are starting to hear about it. And we see this huge crowd of people, 5,000 yeah. people. I told you there'd be thousands of people coming. Yep. This is a huge crowd that just like on Pentecost, which you mentioned, we've got this group of people that are so excited about what Peter and John have done. They've heard about Jesus and they believe the message about Jesus. Yeah. So that's a pretty powerful thing. Yeah, what, yeah that, that's an amazing thing to, to comprehend. That such great faith that they had. Um, they, they didn't have access to all the New Testament like we do. They didn't have all this information compiled. They just, they saw the work of Jesus and they believed. It's, it's faith in the rawest form, in the purest form. It's just, um, it's it's just nice to to have stories like that, and that's that's what we want to continue to happen today. All right, why don't you pick it up with verse five? I stopped you. Yes, um, and it came to pass on the next day that the rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in their midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So, there's some the cool things. So, they being talked to right now by all these high priests and um, all these upper people in the Jewish faith, um, they're probably not super happy because they are the ones who wanted Jesus dead. They're the ones who right. put everything into motion. So if Jesus actually rose from the dead, they would be liars. And they do not want to be liars. Um, so they are going to do everything in their power to say, nope, it wasn't Jesus. Jesus is still dead. He has not risen from the dead. Um, so we'll, we'll see what they're what they're trying to plot and what they're able to do later on. So notice that what happened here is after that first evening when they were arrested, they were mm -hmm. said that they were taken into custody, they were thrown into prison overnight. So they were in jail overnight. The next morning the Jewish leaders come and they're starting to piece all of this stuff together and they're asking questions and they want to know what happened. Mm -hmm. And so Peter begins simply by saying, hey, we didn't do this. Mm -hmm. We did this through the name of Jesus. It was actually Jesus who was the one who did this. Now that is going to cause some problems, like you said, right. because they don't want to hear about this Jesus. And so in the next section, we're going to hear what they have to say to Peter and John about who did this amazing miracle. And like Michael said, they just had this guy crucified. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear anymore about this Jesus guy. They thought this was all over. Right. Once the guy was dead, they thought, we didn't, we'll never hear about this guy again. Mm -hmm. Well, not exactly the way that they thought it was going to go. Yeah. Peter even uses Old Testament scripture right. at the very end. Um, where verse, verse 11 and 12 is Old Testament scripture that they are well familiar with. This is probably stuff they've had memorized. And so it's not going to make them very happy knowing that Peter is using that scripture to talk about Jesus, right? Um, they, which is again, you know, talking about Jesus is is Christ, right? Yeah. The, the verse eleven is taken from Psalm one hundred and eighteen, and it would have been recited every Passover. So it was part of their Passover celebration in their homes every year. So you're right; they would have known this passage very, very well. But Peter puts it back on them, and he says, "Jesus 
was the chief cornerstone, the stone which you, you builders, you're the ones that are referred to in that verse, mm -hmm. you rejected him. So here we, we're right back to the law and the gospel again. Right, yeah. There's the law saying you shouldn't have done that. But we're also going to hear Peter bring in the gospel. He says there is only salvation in the name of Jesus. Apart from Jesus, there's no hope for salvation. But with Jesus, mm -hmm. we have hope. And there's the gospel. Right. And we'll, we'll see their, how their stubbornness prevents them from really hearing what he's saying. Right. So we're going to pick it up with verse 13. I'll read the next section. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them... They could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go outside, out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it. But, so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them, that from now on they speak to no man in this name. And they called them in and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Now, Michael, earlier we heard the word boldness. Right. And we're going to see that, that takes a lot of guts mm -hmm. for Peter to say that to the religious leaders, the guys that had just thrown him into jail. And there's not just a couple, there's a whole bunch of religious leaders here. This, there's a lot of, a lot of pressure on them. What, what could, is there a way that we can um, connect that to today? Like what type of people would we be before having them tell us to stop? Well, you might think of police officers or mayors or governors or maybe mm -hmm. even the president. These are the, the most powerful people in our country or in our community. And imagine if, if not only those people who have power, but also the ones who enforce that power, like mm -hmm. police officers, are the ones who are standing there and saying, we don't want you talking about this Jesus anymore. You have to stop. And that's, that is a good lesson for us to think about. What would we say? Imagine a police officer came up to you and, and said, you can't go to church anymore. You can't talk about this Jesus anymore. And if you do, we're going to throw you in jail. Or worse. Or worse. That's, a, that's an important question for us to think about. How would we confront that situation? And Peter's point here is, we realize that there's two authorities. There's a human authority that comes from our government and police officers. And there's God's authority. And all of those human authorities ultimately come from God. But Peter says, yes, we should obey those human authorities. But God is the greater authority. And if these two things contradict each other, then we ought to obey God rather than men. Yeah. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what they had done. For the man was over 40 years old, on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. So it's kind of a neat <clears throat> conclusion to this story. This is one of those stories that has a happy ending. Yeah. Uh, they don't all end up like this. But in this case, the religious leaders knew that there was nothing they could do to Peter and John because they couldn't say that a miracle hadn't been done. They knew that all the people knew it. This guy had been 40 years old sitting by the temple. Well, maybe not sitting by the temple for that long, but they had, he had been around for a long time and everybody yeah. knew who he was, and now he's walking. So 
that brought some reality to what the apostles Peter and John were saying and they simply couldn't punish them. If they would have punished Peter and John, they would have had a riot on their hands from mm -hmm. the people. So in this case, Peter and John were let go, but they were again set. They were told, hey, don't talk about him anymore. They tried to yep. threaten him. Again, there was nothing that they could do. But this is again an important thing for us to, to think about. That might not always work out that way with us, Michael. No. We might not always have the confidence that they can't do what they're threatening. Yeah. But we have to trust in God, and that's what Peter and John did, that ultimately, even if they can do what they're threatening against us, and we're going to see other examples in the book of Acts where they do follow up and do what they've threatened to do, yeah. and still, no matter what, with boldness, we need to point people to Jesus and proclaim what he has done for us because there is the only place where we find salvation. It right. is only in the name of Jesus. Yeah, it's that one thing that we just cannot afford to sacrifice. Anything of this world, we don't need. Um, but our faith in Jesus, we do because eternity is a lot longer than our life here on That's earth. That's right. So even we should follow these apostles example they were faithful unto death jesus was faithful unto death so ultimately we are following jesus's example um and you know we're not saying that you're going to end up in a situation that puts you in that but we always want to be ready um to to share our love no matter what because there are always going to be people who say don't talk about that or right. i don't want to hear that right now or i'm going to bully you because you are talking about jesus and we always want to choose God rather than man. Right. So let's back up a little bit and review and think about the whole story. So one of the things that we see in this story is that God gave Peter and John the ability to heal a man who had been, he had had this disease for more than 40 years. Yeah. But that gave them an opportunity to tell other people about Jesus. And they did that with boldness. And when we think about the application of this lesson to ourselves, we're reminded that we too may face persecution. Michael, you and I can't heal people like you said earlier. Right. But we do have a message that the world doesn't like. And we know that the world doesn't like it. And at times, we're nervous and we don't want to speak about Jesus because we're afraid of what the world is going to think. And that's why this lesson is such an important lesson. Because we need to look at Peter and John and see how they didn't care what people threatened them with or what could have happened. They said, this is too important. And if people don't know about this Jesus, they're going to go to hell. Yeah, That's the bottom line. That we need to communicate to people that Jesus is the one who has saved them from their sins. And if they don't know that and if they don't trust in him, then... That is a sad, sad thing for them, not only in this life, but also, more importantly, in eternity. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, they they probably didn't want to be persecuted um, and everything, but it's they're mimicking that love that Jesus has. Jesus didn't just die for us who already believe right now. Jesus died for literally every single right. person that has ever lived and that will live to come. Right. And so... Even if, like we talk about in other lessons, even if we're, if it's someone we don't feel comfortable with um, or someone we think is different than us or just anything, um, we still want to talk about that, even if they're mean to us because Jesus died for them too and it's important for them to know it as well. Right. So you've got three activities in this lesson. The first one is basically matching. You have two columns and you're going to take the one that fills the blank properly. So that'll be a, a good way of, of answering the question and reviewing the lesson. And then the second one is, is taking other parts of God's word. One of them is actually in this lesson, but then applying it to our lesson. What, what does God tell us about evangelism? What does he tell us about boldness? What kind of an opportunity and witness can we be to the world around us? And there's some good application questions in there for us to really think about what does this lesson mean for us in, in our lives today? And then the last one is a, a crossword puzzle. You guys like doing these or a word search, uh, going through there and finding the words that are listed on the right. See how well you can do of finding 
those words that apply to our story. Uh, and when you find that word, think about where it happens in the story. Think about what that word has to do with the story that we've heard this week. And it'll help to re review and refresh your, your uh, understanding of the lesson itself. Yep. I recommend using a pencil for it because it's a little bit tricky, tricky. again. They really get us on these crosswords. There's a lot of words that'll have like three-fourths of the word right. there, and then the last couple letters it's will gone. be different. Right. So uh, take your time. Yeah. <laughs> take your time. Also, I don't think that repentance is in. One of your words in there is repentance, and I don't think it's actually in the crossword. Um, I spent a lot of time looking for it. Then, after the crossword puzzle, we have some passages, um, from, one from Psalms, one from Romans, um, and these are, these are important things. There's, the Bible is just filled with so many comforting things for us because we don't want to go through troubles. We do not want to be persecuted. We don't want to be, be hurt or threatened or anything like that for our faith, but Jesus gives us some confidence knowing that he will be with us. He, God's telling us to call upon, he says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Um, so he's saying, call upon me when you're in the midst of trouble. And then don't forget to glorify me, obviously, afterwards, because it's God that gets us through that. And then one of my favorite passages, Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's really important um, because we need to constantly be going into our Bibles throughout our entire lives, no matter how many times you've read it, because that's where our faith comes. And God will always still be revealing something. There, there are some elderly people who have read the whole Bible multiple, multiple times throughout their lives, and they have picked up every single time new information. Right. You read the same thing 50 times, and... Most of those times, you're going to get something new out of That's it right. that God reveals to you. God continues to speak to us every time we open up his word. He's, yep. he's got something to say to us. It doesn't get old. It is new every day. The Lord reminds us and assures us of his promises there. And there are things that we need to be reminded of, things that we need to be encouraged in. All of those things, God is continually talking to us. So we, we certainly want God to be talking to us throughout our lives. We don't want to neglect and say, oh, I don't want to hear what you have to say to me today. Mm -hmm. A yeah. blessing. Yeah. And then at the very end, you guys have a hymn, which ends up being our prayer. It's a beautiful prayer, reminding us of the joy of the lame man. We were told earlier on when he was healed, he didn't just walk and leap, mm -hmm. but he praised God. And so we'll use one of these verses as our closing prayer for today. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. Glory to God and praise and love be ever, ever given by saints below and saints above, the church in earth and heaven. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for being with us today. Please go through this assignment answer those questions they're really important for us to grow in our knowledge and therefore faith and memorize those passages because now we know faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god that's right uh, so we look forward to being with you guys again we'll, we'll continue on through our study of the book of acts we'll see you next time yeah take care